Welcome to episode 6 of the Bear Trap on the Boomer Bus channel. This is a Bears podcast by a Bears fan, and today's episode is about should the Bears lose? A uh, really easy question, but a concept that is kind of sweeping sports. So, um, talking about should the Bears be trying to lose stems back to last year where we had a 3-13 and team, but... We went into a game with the 49ers, who also were not uh, good at all. And the Bears won 26-6. And a lot of people said the Bears should have just tanked that game instead of trying to win it. We were already at a bad point in the season. We knew we weren't good. We weren't going to play off. So just go ahead and lose on purpose so we can have a higher draft pick. Now, what ended up turning out is... The Bears made a trade with the San Francisco 49ers to move up one spot to get Mitch Trubisky. And, of course, if you look at the schedule, had the Bears lost to the 49ers, we would have been at number two and we would not have had to trade up to get Mitch Trubisky. Or, seemingly, that's what people think because we never know. But that's kind of the case for tanking is, hey, had you lost that game instead of winning a meaningless game, you wouldn't even have to give up any picks. You would have got the guy you wanted at number two. So, and then this goes back uh, even further, of course, over to basketball. It's a much bigger concept where tanking is the thing. If you're not going to compete for a championship, then just go out and lose on purpose so you can get high draft picks. Now, that's a bigger, bigger conversation that I could talk about as a phenomenon, but let's just stick to the Bears and football. Um, So regarding the 49ers thing, that is hard to say because from what we heard, it wasn't so much that there was a lot of um, activity trying to get Trubisky that caused Ryan Pace to make the move. It was really him just trying to make 100% sure that he got the guy he wanted. So if we were number two, then who's to say he wouldn't have traded up with the Cleveland Browns to number one and get Trubisky? Because he didn't know who was trying to move up. You know, that people could have been telling him, yeah, we got offers. But if he was just going to make 100% sure, no matter what, that he got Trubisky, then being at number two wouldn't have done anything. The only thing that would have assured we would have made no trade was him being at number one, which wasn't going to happen. So I don't necessarily know that beating the 49ers went that far in, you know, setting our course in the draft. I just think Ryan Pace wanting to be aggressive and wanting to get the guy he wanted was going to set the course of the draft no matter what. Um, so to a bigger point, should the bears be losing? We know they're not a playoff team. Um, as I said, when Fox first took over, they were a very, very competitive team, much more than people give them credit for. We went six and 10, but our loss was by average of nine points. So we were in every game. Um, and now of course we've kind of gone down a little bit because of really the injury bug. I don't think it's a talent thing. I mean, we had definitely lost talent on offense, but we gained some talent. It really is just the injury bug on the whole team. And so with people looking at it, hey, Fox might be out. The team's not going to go to playoffs. Should we just be losing to get the highest draft picks possible? My ultimate answer to that is going to be no. Um, and for a number of reasons, I, I get that's the thing. Tanking is the thing. Fans think it's cool. They saw the Cubs do it and, you know, all that good stuff. But my issue with that, especially in football, is that, yes, you could get a higher draft pick or whatever, whatever. But there's two big issues. Number one, which is a smaller issue is that good players have been found in all types of rounds, all types of picks. You know, needless to say, the Tom Brady at number 199. But then we can go all over the list with the big-time players who were drafted at a very low thing, a very low pick. And so can we sit here and say that it, you have to be a top pick or high pick to be productive? No, that's not true. Now, going into the draft, 
of course, everybody that on the surface looks like, you know, game changers are going to be higher round picks. And some of them will work out, but that's not always the case either. The draft is such a crapshoot. It, it, it really isn't about, you know, whose status where. It's about scouting, which brings me to my second point. That we can have number one picks for five straight years in a row. If we don't have the right staff to scout the talent, then it won't matter. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that Ryan Pace isn't the right guy or our scouting department is bad or any of that because it's still, you know, the jury's still out. We got time to see what these people do. But I will say just looking at the track record, I don't feel comfortable saying, hey, you know, Ryan Pace is going to make this thing work no matter what. That That's definitely not how I feel. So um, I would tell people that, yes, getting a higher draft pick does help out, a, you know, some, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you that's a guarantee. Now, people say, well, if you're playing percentages, then this gives you a better chance. Yeah, but again, a good team can draft anywhere and be successful. Look at the New England Patriots. Look at other teams that do it well. And it's really because, it. and again, this goes back to my overall thoughts. And if you follow me during draft season, you'll hear this 100 million times. Most players aren't. Uh, going to transcend schemes. Most players have to be in a certain scheme. So it's not necessarily who has the best talent and who has talent that fits what we need them to do. And you get teams like the Patriots that understand, you know what, it doesn't matter what your status is. You have the skill set that we need for this exact position and then going forward for them. So a lot of teams do, you know, best player available, blah, 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 blah. And I think, you know, a lot of especially bad teams are like, we just need to get more talent on the team. And I get that. But overall, you got to have a plan for them. If you don't have a plan for them, unless they're the, you know, number one pick, then it's going to be tough because you can't just throw people on your team that don't fit. Because most of the time, especially rookies, they need to be in a situation where they fit. And so for me... I, I just don't think the answer is tanking. And now the other reason besides, you know, all of that and the draft mechanics of it, the psychology of it, you don't want to build a culture where losing is OK. And I know a lot of people will sit here and look at the surface and say, oh, man, you know, if you got good players, it doesn't matter or if you got a great coach or this or that, you know, that whole psychology is just, you know, um, Fluff talk is really not. As a coach, um, and as knowing many coaches on all levels, psychology is a big part of the team. And, and you hear some of these stories, a lot of stories you don't hear, but there's always rumors and, you know, talks about what coaches do to psych people up, like Joe Madden and the Cubs. And then there's talks about these speeches that people give and these things and the antics coaches do. And it's true because you have to get players in the right mindset. All that talent doesn't matter if they're not in the right mindset. And so the culture of a locker room, the culture of a team, the standards, that goes a long way. And so it's very hard for for anybody to sit here and say, okay, Well, once we get the talent, we're going to tell them we got high standards. We expect to win this, that, and the other. But how do you do that when you just sat here and let the team tank? And so it's hard for me, especially in football where, okay, if we tank and we start getting better players, you know, even in the draft, let's say a big draft class is about 10 players. That's what that's not a big percent of your roster. The most percent of your roster is still going to be from the old regime. It, whereas in basketball, if you tank and you get two good players, two, three good players, you can cut almost everybody else and bring in new people and it's a whole new roster. Football, you can't do that. So now you're going to mix in new talent with a bunch of people that you just told them to tank. And so how can you ever build a winning culture from that? And so... 
for me, that is a big piece of it. It's not just the talent and the numbers. Yes, that's important, but really it is what are we trying to accomplish? What inspiration, what mindset, what goals are you putting in front of your players? And to tank and to sit there and show that we're not competing is never going to work. And football especially where your comp, your pursuit, your passion, your competition level, that takes you a very far long way because it's putting in the extra hours to get better at your craft it's putting in the extra hours to study it's being cohesive with your team all on the same page for one goal it's all those different things that make championship teams and why the patriots are so good because if you come to that team you're on the boat this is the only way we're selling you're not selling a different way you're going the same way we are for the same thing and so in order to build a system like that, you can't have that that mindset of, hey, let's just go out and lose. And I know a lot of people say the Patriots are the, the exception, but really, are they? In football and in the world right now, we're short patience. We want things instantly and then we copycat and we think we can replicate everybody. But the teams that do it well and do it well for years have patience and they understand how to do things the right way. And so if the Bears are ever going to get to prominence, not for one year, not a flash in the bottle, if we're ever going to rebuild this thing to be a a perennial contender, then we got to do things the right way. And I don't think tanking is the right way. All right. So that's it for me. But importantly, what do you think? Go to comment section. Should the Bears be losing on purpose? We'll get in high draft picks, cure everything. Go to the comment section, let me know. Thumbs up, subscribe. Share it out with everybody trying to grow the channel. And thank you for listening, guys.